first on Guam. Half a day. Welcome to KUM News Weekend Edition. I'm Mitsuki Hirayama. Great to have you here with us. Nick Delgado reporting a man and woman are killed in a serious car crash early Saturday. It happened at 2.30 a.m. along Route 1 Marine Corps Drive in East Sagania. Officers with the Guam Police Department learning the driver of a beige 2007 Nissan Altima was heading southbound on the inner lane when he lost control of the car, crashing into a pair of coconut trees near the beach. The impact of the crash so severe that the car wrapped around the tree. Police say the driver and passenger were rushed to the hospital, but they did not survive. Their identities have not yet been released. Highway Patrol investigators have yet to determine what caused the crash. This unfortunately brings the total number of traffic-related deaths this year in Guam to 21. It's another indication of America's intense focus on the Indo-Pacific. The U.S. Agency for International Development opened a first-ever Pacific Islands mission office in Fiji this week. USAID director and former United Nations ambassador Samantha Power was there for the launch. Mr. Leconte reports on the significance to Micronesia and the Western Pacific. In a statement, USAID said establishing a new Pacific Islands mission demonstrates its commitment to help advance economic and social development goals and also fulfills a pledge by President Biden to Pacific Island leaders at last year's historic summit in Washington. Longtime Indo-Pacific analyst and journalist Christopher Cottrell covered the event in Suva, Fiji. Guam's immediate neighbors there in uh, Palau, Federated States of Micronesia and Marshall Islands uh, have new representation there, as well as six other Pacific Islands countries, Nauru, Kiribati, Tonga, Samoa, and Fiji and Tokelau. The new mission, which was relocated from Manila, is seen as a counterbalance to growing Chinese inroads in the Indo-Pacific. Cottrell says the message from USAID Director Samantha Power is that Pacific nations have options beyond what Beijing is offering. Options for your own pathway and not being stuck in debt trap um, diplomacy or um, being, you know, population suddenly caught with dark dealings in back rooms where no one knows what's going on. But really, this is a call for greater um, transparency and sunshine. He says USAID will address the specific priorities outlined by Pacific nation leaders. Number one is job creation. Number two is increased health care services. And um, foremost is ways to adapt um, and be resilient in the face of climate change and climate crisis. I know you there in Guam were very hard hit a few months ago by a typhoon, a tropical cyclone. This is something that resonates everywhere in the Pacific. What will be interesting will be the acceleration of programs on high tech and on climate change. Uh, that I think is being billed at 20 million, but I'm still getting the official figures uh, off of them today. And he adds that Ambassador Power's message in Fiji appears to have resonated well. The overall presence here has been quite well received, I would say, and is something other Pacific Islands are watching closely as they want to understand how they can um, engage with this new presence here in this new office. Nestor Lecanto, KUAM News. The Speaker of the 37th Guam Legislature will call session this week in honor of the late John Bloss. Bloss, a former commissioner of JIGO and Mayor's Council of Guam Executive Director, passed away at the age of 60. His state fun funeral is set for Thursday, August 24th at 10 a.m. in the Speaker Antonio Umpingo Legislative Session Hall in the Guam Congress Building in Hagania. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero states, quote, Commissioner Bloss dedicated his life to serving our people and, uh, and his community of JIGO, adding, quote, in his capacity as Executive Director for the Mayor's Council of Guam, he elevated the way we respond to emergencies and ensure the integration of our island's village mayors within our response processes. His work paved the way for the response capabilities we see today. He will be missed, and we extend our deepest condolences to those who loved him. 
Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio also stated, as an athlete, Commissioner Bloss connected with our families through sports, advocating for our island sports leagues and growing their opportunities to develop their skills. Additionally, he connected to our people through music, using his talents as a singer and bassist with his covering areas such as agriculture, aquaculture, island beautification, invasive species removal, reforestation, circular economy, ocean conservation, and renewable energy. Congratulations to all graduates. Four Guam students recently completed the Pacific Summer Transportation Education Program National Summer Transportation Institute. It was hosted by the University of Hawaii at Manoa at on Oahu at the start of the summer. The two-week summer camp introduced students to transportation careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics through related activities, field trips, and recreational events. Traveling and housing accommodation costs were covered through a grant from the Federal Highway Administration Department of Transportation. The students shared what they learned during their visit to Adeloupe. They were recognized by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, Department of Public Works Director Vince Ariola, and Guam Community College President Mario Cotta for their accomplishment. But well, Guam is getting more global recognition through our elected leaders. Guam Delegate James Moylan was selected to be the Republican co-chair of the bipartisan Philippines Friendship Caucus in the House of Representatives. Moylan will be leading the caucus along with Representative Bobby Scott from Virginia. Officials say their primary ob objective of the caucus is to address issues of mutual benefit to both the United States and the Philippines. Moylan adding he will advocate for a Guam-only visa waiver waiver rather for Philippine citizens, Medicare portability, the Filipino Veterans Fairness Act, and furthering opportunities for H-1B visas for medical pro professionals. He will also be seeking the caucus's support for the extension of the H-2B visas program. In regional news, Saipan students get their work shown on the big screen. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglonia reports on the Northern Marianas College's first cinema on Saipan class. When we hear stories, we connect with the other. And when we do all of this together in a theater, we connect as a community. And that is what we need. And so I urge you to put your phones away and start coming back to the movies because we have 11 amazing filmmakers who are going to tell you their stories tonight. It's cinema on Saipan movie making in the Marianas. The Northern Marianas College diversifying its courses with this Community Development Institute funded three-week program on Saipan. Students put together three short films that premiered at Regal Saipan. They're hoping to build the film and media industry in the Marianas. I think it's a real possibility that I could, you know, major in a film. Being a senior in high school right now, you know, life's crazy. I'm applying to colleges, scholarships, so I'm not really sure what I want to do, but after being in this program, it's, it seems like a real possibility that film could be a good thing in my life. Cinematography, uh, not a, I, it's a word that I'm not, I wasn't familiar with, but after joining this program, it really opened up um, to what it really is and about. I really hope that um, the students or like kids who are interested in filmmaking or anything of the sort, I hope they'll be able to like find this program since it is a really great opportunity and I quite enjoyed it, too. And I really hope that they also have the fun and experience that I like, experienced in this program. The course's instructor shares what's next for the class and the growing industry. Now that we've got the first iteration out of the way and we were kind of able to quote unquote beta test it, you know, I think it's more of a, a matter of just expanding, you know, access to software, having more laptops for students to work off of, um, you know, having like cinema lenses, um, you know, high end lights and things like that, really just to take it to the next level and say, OK, like, how do we actually go about making like a feature length film here or something like that? Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. All month long, the KUM Care Force, along with Guam Animals in Need and the Booney Flight Project, are making strides to save countless furry lives on island with Clear the Shelters. Let's unleash a wave of compassion and find forever homes for these four-legged cuties. First off, this is Freya. 
Freya is a beautiful black feline who wants nothing more than to snuggle up with you and take naps. She's super friendly and a furball of love. She's ready to go home and shower you with all her love. Next, me little bear. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Beware of the tiny little bear. She may be small, but she's got a big personality and resembles that of a baby bear. She is curious and always wants to be near her human. This gorgeous, beautiful chocolate feline is seeking her forever home. And say hello to this white flame point kitten named Nemo. Searching for a kitten? Come and find Nemo here again. Nemo loves to talk. He's expressive and will let you know how he feels, what he thinks, and what he wants. And right now, he wants a family he can tell all his adventures to. This is Luffy the puppy. Luffy loves to play. He dreams of a big green field to run and play on. He dreams of hiking and long walks on the beach. He dreams of the day his forever family will come and take him home. And finally, meet Macho. Macho's a loyal dog, loves to go on walks and bask in the sun. He wants a companion to grow with, 3 p.m. For more information, visit guamanimals.org. And every Saturday for this month, gain adoptions are just $100. Adoptions also come with their basic vaccines, dewormers, flea and tick preventative, microchip, rabies vaccine, and spay and neuter surgery. Let's clear the shelters, Guam. More weekend edition from your news leader after this quick commercial break. You're watching KUAM. Watch KUAM TV 8, live on Peacock. Check out our live channel, NBC shows, live sports original programming, movies, plus so much more. Visit PeacockTV.com slash local or download the app and subscribe today. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life Free Typhoon Moir debris cleanup is underway by FEMA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Stage and sort eligible typhoon debris, including green waste, large appliances, residential construction, demolition debris, and metals as soon as possible at the residential Ineligible debris will be left on site and may result in illegal dumping fines. For updated information by village, visit tinyurl.com backslash cleanupgu. This ad is paid for by the Office of the Governor of Guam. Welcome back to Weekend Edition. We now introduce you to the latest inductee of the Culture Club. Culture Club, brought to you by Hanum, the freshest bottled water made in Guam. Half a day. Thank you so much for joining us here at Hot for Kids. Wahoo see Sarah and I am the camp facilitator. So Hutsa Kids is a free five-week program where kids come here and learn how to build a traditional Chamorro hut. And we'll be incorporating the Chamorro language, some traditional Chamorro practices like flinging, weaving, coconut husking, and so much more. Hutsa means one in Chamorro, but it also means to lift up or in how we translated it was to build. You know, I go to Rota quite often and I see Guelu, who is our camp instructor. He's a master hut builder and I see him with the kids and all of the huts that they're constructing out there. And I was always fascinated with his work and his skills. And I don't know, it just came up into my head when Frank was talking about these kids programs. I'm like, man, how cool would it be if I were to fly Guelu here and have a kids program where kids can learn how to build Chamorro huts. And that's kind of the beginning and origin of Huts of Kids. My name is Kara Sablon and um, I'm eight. We learned how to skin wood 
I wanted to learn how to make a treehouse. A treehouse? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So knowledge is power, right? And um, the kids are the future. So it's really our responsibility to pass on the knowledge to our kids so that they can teach their children. And our Chamorro culture is so beautiful and is endless. And we're still learning something new every day. So it's our responsibility to continue to learn and teach our children to do the same. Yeah, dan no go no malago no talo na ba yu u faisin todo i i toto Marianas na mala da ta praktika i kultura ta go ti kulturata ta toto ki kulturata da ta fanagi fa magunta da mala da ta fata huzong gi 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 tanota pos gi lo eno sai na mosi. Gotta give a shout out to the team, Fakai over here in Tumon, Roman de la Cruz. Thank you so much for having us construct this hut here and Guelu, of course, and everyone else who worked together to make this happen. And I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and finding interest in what we're doing here today. Culture Club, brought to you by Hanum, the freshest bottled water made in Guam. Your weekend sports is next. We'll be right back. is over guam the all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at cars plus introducing finish line express open seven days a week the all-new cashless drive-through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted jeeps and full-size pickup trucks just roll up pick a wash insert credit card or show your ever wash app and roll through plus power vacuums are available to clean the interior show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at cars plus and mighty open from 7 a.m to 7 p.m seven days a week KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. Hey guys, Jason Salas here. I want to tell you about what's coming up on KUAM TV this weekend on Sunday the 20th. Get up at 2.30 in the morning because we have premier football. This is Tottenham versus Man U. You can watch one of the most storied football programs do their thing. Make sure to check that out. That's 2.30 in the morning, Channel 8. And then Sunday and Monday at 6 a.m., get up bright and early with us right at sunup because the U.S. Amateur Championship from Cherry Hills Country Club in Colorado. Golf for you. Make sure to check that out. And also make sure to watch on Peacock stream Monday at 2.30 a.m. My Seattle Mariners. I swear we're going to make the World Series one of these days, but they are heading down to Texas. They are taking on the Astros. And also, guys, go online and cheer for the athletes from Guam, FS Palau and the NMI competing in the World Athletic Championships in Budapest, Hungary, including Guam's own Joseph Green. Joseph, man, we are behind you all the way. We know you're going to fight. Represent 671. Do your best, man. Bring back the hard work. There's no greater honor for any athlete than to play for country and to represent, to the best of your ability, the place you call home. The men and women of Team Guam have that opportunity a year from now in Paris as Olympians, but the more immediate future has them laser-focused, whether in team events or individual competition, on the Pacific Games in the Solomon Islands about 100 days from now. The Guam National Olympic Committee is tasked with getting the nearly three dozen athletic federations locally ready, whether on the court, taking the track, on the mat, across the net, or at the pool. When you compare all the other individual sports, we're about equal. Now, the Pacific Games, which is going to happen in Solomon Islands in uh, uh, late November to early December, you know, that's, for, men, for many of our sports federation, that's their, their Olympic level. Mm -hmm. Longtime GNOC President Rick Bloss first carried the Guam flag at the 87 SPG in New Caledonia. One of his goals is changing the way we compete. I'm getting to a point where I'm tired of sitting up in the stands, watching our athletes being battered around by other athletes that really n never grew up in their country or their respective islands. 
They know nothing about the islands. They've never visited the islands other than their parents uh, being from the islands. So, you know, I, I got to the point where I'm ready to concede and, and make some concessions because I'm just tired of seeing our, our athletes uh, being defeated by outside uh, uh, recruits. Secretary General Bob Steffi sees good things for Guam this year with a healthy contingent flying the Great Seal of Guam high in the opening ceremonies. The, the total number of athletes, not, not counting the, the coaches, you know, it's probably going to be between 150 and 200 athletes, I would guess. <laughs> but with success comes responsibility. And as medal hopefuls, Steffi says other Pacific nations are gunning for us and want to steal our shine. When we go to these regional competitions, Guam always has a has a bullseye on, on their back. And and everybody wants to beat Guam. And and you know the fans are the fans are against us sometimes and, and you know we sit in, in Samoa, I was sitting in the stands, I didn't have I didn't have the, the Guam jacket on. And every basket I clapped because I figured, you know, if I'm if I'm clapping for the Guam team, I'm gonna get killed <laughs> before I get out of here. So is the GNOC able to give us a hint of which of our athletes is going to carry our flag into the Solomon Islands? How soon will we know? Just when they're about to walk in, into the uh, stadium. We normally, normally keep it a surprise. We look at the performance of all the athletes, their accomplishments, and then, and I think we've done a very good job in terms of identifying our flag bearers. Our athletes recognize the value of team, which in no small part includes the island community. Support them. Give them the support they deserve. Because at this point right now, and we're still recovering from this super typhoon, every bit of support is needed to get our teams there. And so when they come to you and ask you for your help, you know, please don't turn them away because your support is very crucial to their performance. These former athletes turned executives find new glory in imparting wisdom to a new generation to wear our colors and to fight for our flag. Focus on their, uh, on their goals and objectives and focus on uh, being competitive and standing at that podium. Work hard, represent Guam. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Now for your Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club shoutouts this weekend submitted on KUAM.com. It's that time of the show where we celebrate everyone having a birthday this weekend. It's time for your Cold Stone Creamery birthday shoutouts. Happy 93rd birthday to George C. Paris, who's also a Korean War veteran. Much love from your family and everyone here at KUAM. Also, happy birthday to Andin Sage. We love you so much and are so blessed to have you in our lives. Also, happy ninth birthday to Kayan Josiah Mangolonya Cruz. Happy ninth birthday, sweet. Love mommy, Jordan, Vea, and Pua. We love you so, so much. And finally, happy birthday to Annie to Tao Tao Cruz. On your special day, God bless you from your husband, Bill, and your children, Andy, Kiana, Chris, and Tosh. We love you to the moon and back. That's it for us here on Weekend Edition. For more news, go to KUAM.com or visit us at KUAM News on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You can also watch us on Peacock. I'm Mitsuki Hariyama. Have a safe weekend, everyone.